Hello there, Internet. This is the Adventurers Guild. I'm Steve, this is my basement, and this is the 2020 Game Room Tour. So I guess we're going to kick things off as we come down the stairs here. Got the uh, custom marquee for the movie theater. And then above it we have uh, the entrance to the theater being guarded by some Avengers. Hulk, Thor, and Doctor Strange. So as we come down and around the stairs here, you'll notice a distinct uh, type of theming. And the theater is completely Star Wars themed. So I have a bunch of various stuff on display. Uh, but the most important thing in the meat and potatoes here is the theater itself. So we have four movie theater chairs, all with custom lighting you can turn on and off. And the theater itself is uh, 1500 watt surround sound Dolby Atmos. We have 110 inch 4K screen. If we look over here, we have the 4K um, with HDR10 projector hanging from the ceiling there. Got some soundproofing. Of course, Poe Dameron's helmet. And then all of these movie posters are from the 1997 original trilogy Star Wars uh, re-release. And all of these posters, these aren't reprints, they were actually hanging in, hanging in theaters. Um, we have some, like I said before, we have some Star Wars memorabilia here. We have uh, my man Luke Skywalker's head, uh, Anakin, Darth Maul, some other stuff. We got a replica, official replica, of the uh, the medal that they get at the end of episode 4. Rey and Kylo Ren battling Han and Chewie. Uh, some various other stuff, a couple kyber crystals. This is a lightsaber from Galaxy's Edge. And my movie collection here, guarded by Yoda. And then we have some more uh, merchandise here up on the shelf. We have the Millennium Falcon, R2, C-3PO, BB-8. These are limited edition sculptures of Han and Luke, also after the Battle of Yavin with their medals on. Poe Dameron, Captain Phasma, some pops. And then that about does it for the theater area. Although, if we come to this direction, you will notice that there are four, there's actually five, but one of them is not hanging up. Uh, four custom lightsabers. These are actually made by Ultra Sabers. And if you saw our lightsaber battle video, these are what we used. They're made of aircraft grade aluminum for the hilts and the shafts are all polycarbonate uh, so they're essentially indestructible. I mean we've gone completely ham on each other with these things and they don't leave a scratch on them. Leave a scratch on us and some bruises but you can't break these things. And then right here, one, two, three are um, frames from the 1997 Star Wars re-releases. Uh, these are actual ce uh, cells from the films themselves that ran on the projectors in the theaters. This is a ticket from the Galaxy premiere at the Grauman's Chinese Theater for Star Wars Episode 7, the day it premiered in Hollywood. This is a ticket from that day. Uh, this, is, um, this is a stamp from uh, something. I'm not exactly sure what. It says first day, of, this first day of issue, May 2007. I don't know specifically what that is, but it's cool. R2-D2 is coming out the wall. This is pretty cool. Uh, so this is, if you're familiar with the whole um, E.T. got buried in the, the, the Nevada desert because Atari went out of business, they went bankrupt because the game E.T. was so bad. Uh, there was a big documentary about it. The Angry Video Game Nerd had a movie about it. Uh, so essentially, this is actually a game that was dug out of the Alamogordo landfill. So this is Phoenix, it wasn't E.T. because the E.T. ones sold for like insane amounts of money. But this is Phoenix, it was buried underground in Alamogordo, Texas in a landfill under a whole bunch of concrete. And this is a certificate of authenticity from that dig site. So there's that. And then we come around the corner here. And then this is probably what most of you tuned in for. This is the arcade. So we have 11 machines down here and we'll quickly go through all of them. First and foremost, the one that you see us play on from time to time, and also known as the big one, this is my Star Wars four-player arcade cabinet. 
with the custom marquee that says Devon's Arcade. Um, I go by Steve on the, my YouTube channel, but my gamer handle is Devon, so hence Devon's Arcade. So this is a four player cabinet. There's one, two, three, four players, each with six buttons. Uh, eight way gates for playing normal arcade games, plus a dedicated four way gate for things like Pac Man and Donkey Kong, stuff like that. There's a spinner for games like Arkanoid. Uh, there are two light guns, one blue, one red. They work perfectly with an LED screen, and they're good for things like Time Crisis, House of the Dead, uh, Area 51. They're all on here. There's about 10,000-ish games on here. Pretty much any arcade game you can think of from the dawn of time through about 2001, and then various other games from 2001 on as long as uh, the hardware can support it. Uh, and it's made by a company uh, in New Jersey called Arcades R Fun, the letter R, like Toys R Us, but Arcades R Fun. This is a Pac-Man Battle Royale four-player cabinet. Uh, you may have seen our head-to-head -head video where Jesse and I spray each other with uh, whipped cream. This is the cabinet from that, so it's obviously a cocktail table. There's two versions of this. There's the cocktail version and there's the huge giant screen version you might see in like a Dave & Buster's. So this is the cocktail version. It's four player, uh, basically it's just what it sounds like. It's Battle Royale, four Pac-Man running around trying to eat each other. And what's funny about this is it comes with cup holders because uh, I think they expect you to uh, have a drink when you're playing so you can get loud and obnoxious with your friends. Uh, over here in this corner is a uh, showpiece cabinet from Golden Tea. This is Golden Tea 2019. Actually, believe it or not, Golden Tea 2020 is coming this week. I have to do the update when it arrives. So this is the newest, about to be newest, version of Golden Tea. If it's online, you can play against other people. Uh, but yeah, so you know, it's a, if you're familiar with Golden Tea, you know how it works. It's a trackball-based game. You roll the ball, try to score. It's very, very uh, competitive. It's a little kitchenette area down here because uh, obviously if you're down here in the basement gaming, you don't want to waste time going up to the kitchen to get your drinks or your food. So we got all kinds of snacks and candy, all the necessities, Monster, Coke, any kind of drink you can think of, a little bit of alcohol, <laughs> that's all down here. Speaking of alcohol, we have some interesting bottles of wine that I like to collect. So this is uh, Skywalker wine. This is straight from George Lucas's ranch in California. Pretty cool. This is 10 Forward Vodka. Uh, so what's interesting about this is this, uh, has ac this vodka has actually been to space. So when they make this vodka, they take the ingredients and they send it up in an ultra high atmosphere balloon basically into the upper stratosphere and then they bring it back down from space and then they make the vodka uh, so it's literally space vodka just like Star Trek Once Upon a Vine from Disney World because uh, I like my fairy tales and then this is Game of Thrones um, House Stark Winter Frost Scotch Whiskey and then of course a Lord of the Rings heat sensitive cup to drink it all out of um, we have two Infinity Gauntlets, obviously the two from the last Avengers movies. Thanos is guarding them. This is the Hyrule Shield, um, the Master Sword. And since we're over here right now, uh, this is a full four-piece bathroom. As you can see, toilet if you must go. But there is an electrified fence in there and possibly a raptor, so be careful. But when I built the house, I said to myself, well, if I'm going to have a kitchen down here, that means I don't have to go upstairs for anything. So what else do you have to do that usually involves going upstairs to do something? The bathroom. So you can literally live down here for weeks at a time if you wanted to. Eat, drink, sleep, pee, get a shower, whatever you want. Um, thermal detonators from Galaxy's Edge, which they're actually Sprite and Coke. You may have seen that in the video as well. And now back to the arcade machines. This is a hook pinball machine. This is actually the machine that started my arcade obsession. When I was 13 years old, I went to the Pocono Mountains with my friend Mike, and we spent a weekend there, and I stumbled upon this machine, and I ended up pumping like $20 worth of quarters into this thing over the course of the weekend. And when you're 13, $20 in quarters is a lot of money. I played it, I played it, I played it, and I told him when we left, if I can ever afford to get a pinball machine I'm getting this pinball machine. It's how much I love it. So, sure enough, when I was an adult, first pinball machine I ever bought was Hook. Love this thing. Now, I love pinball. 
I don't have a ton of room for 50 pinball machines. As you can see, the basement's pretty full. So, I actually, this is a virtual pinball machine. Uh, it's made by a company called VP Cabs. You may have seen them on Shark Tank. That's where I heard about it. So what's interesting about this is this is completely artificial. There's no moving parts. This is a 55 inch screen, digital marquee, digital DMD. And what you're probably thinking is, well, virtual pinball, I've seen that at like Chuck E. Cheese or something like that. They're kind of lame and boring. Um, you know, it doesn't make any sounds, doesn't make the proper knocks. Well, not this machine. So this has eight solenoids, a shaker motor, uh, and an accelerometer and gyroscope all built in. So essentially it replicates real pinball perfectly. There's 350 tables on this and all of the, the clicks, the bings, the booms, the pops that you would expect from a regular pinball machine, this'll do. Um, actually, uh, this game here, Circus Voltaire, what's cool about this, to show you, to show you the gyroscope, um, when you're, when you're playing regular pinball, when you're about to drain a ball, you can, you know, you can bump the machine to try to save it. Pinball machines are made to be knocked around. So what's cool about this is, since before this game starts, the ringmaster has popped up. If you actually shake the machine, the ringmaster will shake because he has a built-in accelerometer. You put money in just like a regular pinball machine, you hit start, the ball comes out, you literally use the plunger just like you would in a regular pinball, and all the correct knocks and bangs and booms and pops you would expect from regular pinball all work perfectly. Exact replica. Um, this is a San Francisco Rush, Rush the Rock arcade machine. This is in essentially near mint condition, although it's fallen apart a bunch of times. I've unfortunately learned how to do a lot of uh, arcade and pinball repair since becoming uh, an aficionado of arcade machines. Um, but this works amazing. I love it. It's one of my favorite games down here. This is a Fix-It Felix arcade machine from the movie Wreck-It Ralph. And a little bit of history for you. Fix-It Felix, as you're probably aware, was not a real game. Uh, Disney created it when they made Wreck-It Ralph because they needed a hero and like the, you know, a villain kind of character to whatever, be in the movie. So Disney designed a fake 80s era game called Fix-It Felix and they used a replica Nintendo cabinet when they designed it. So again, these are not real cabinets. You can't, you can't buy these commercially. However, Disney did make about 50-ish of them that they scattered around for media purposes, like advertisement, like in Disney World, some of their Disney resorts. And then when the movie uh, advertisement era was, or, uh, section was kind of done, they basically destroyed them or gave them to employees, head honchos and big wigs and stuff. So you can't get them as a regular consumer. But this is an exact replica um, of a Fix-It Felix machine in the replica N N uh, Nintendo cabinet. Actually, I say replica, it's actually about 8 inches uh, thinner depth-wise because it's just easier to maneuver. But other than the depth, because there's no CRT TV in here, it's an, it's an LCD screen, so there's no need for the extra 8 inches. Uh, these are two main machines. This is a 60-in-1 uh, vert cabinet. So uh, you, when I say vert, that's a vertical screen. So it's ideal for things like Pac-Man or Donkey Kong, anything that's like from early 80s where the screens are all vertical based uh, with four-way gated two-player cabinet. And then this is a 620 game in one of a JAMA cartridge, uh, horizontal beat-em-up style arcade cabinet. So this will play any of the 80s or 90s era side-scrolling games like The Simpsons, X-Men. Ninja Turtles, Street Fighter. Uh, it's eight-way gated, two-player, on a CRT screen. When I got this, I was very uh, insistent that I found one with a CRT TV, because the only other machine down here with a CRT is the, is the racing machine. Um, but I wanted as pixel perfect, as close replica to the original machines as possible, so this gets me there. Awesome machine, I play this all the time. Uh, this is off right now, but this is my racing simulator. Um, it plays modern racing games with an Xbox One. Uh, I mostly use it for Forza Horizon, um, but it's super fun, works perfectly. Racing seat, the works, pedals, shifter, the whole shebang. And then this is the modern game area, so to speak. So uh, my wife's gaming rig, my gaming rig, um, I have a little bit of a Power Rangers obsession, as most people know. I dress up like the Red Ranger because I'm an adult man-child. 
So I have a bunch of random Power Rangers paraphernalia here. Red Ranger helmet, White Ranger helmet, statues, figurines, uh, poster from the movie. And then I also love um, 80s and 90s era Sierra Online, which is a video game company for all you old heads out there that used to make point-and-click adventure games. So I have some uh, vinyl-wrapped pictures of some of my favorites, like Space Quest 3, Quest for Glory 1, Space, uh, Space Quest 6, King's Quest. So if you know what those are, shout out to you. You're awesome. Um, looking this direction, we have my two uh, gaming stations for playing Xbox, PlayStation 4, and the Nintendo Switch. So there's two of them, so you might say, well, you're one person, why do you need two? So, makes perfect sense. I hate split screen. Can't stand split screen games. So, how do you play games side by side in a LAN two player? You get two gaming stations. So this one's mine, 4K TV, uh, the works, and then this one is for guests. So when Jesse comes over and plays, or when any of my other friends come over and play, they play on this one, so we can hook up on LAN or whatever and play on two separate screens. They're both 55 inch, and they both have Xboxes, Switch docks, etc. Um, so my Amiibo collection. Jesse likes to brag that he has more Amiibos than I do. I do have a decent amount, thank you very much, Jesse, but he does have more, I'll admit to that. Uh, a couple other odes to Nintendo products, so Mega Man, Mario, Sonic, Mario poster, a big mural of uh, Zelda. This, uh, a little bit of history from my life. When, or in the year 2006, my wife and I opened up a uh, LAN gaming center, an internet cafe, whereas the cool kids these days like to call it, this term didn't exist back then, but now it's called an eSports lounge. Uh, so in 2006, I opened one in my town. I scraped together literally every penny I had, plus a lot of money I didn't have. Uh, thanks, banks. <laughs> and I opened up a LAN center. Uh, we ran it for three years, from 2006 to 2009. Um, you know, it was super fun. One of the, the probably three of the best years of my life. Um, actually, the only reason we ended up closing it is because I got a job that uh, I couldn't say no to at the time as a network engineer at a local hospital system. So we ended up shutting it down. Um, I don't work there anymore, but again, fantastic. Loved it. Some other various stuff, like a, some, this is, that's actually from Toys R Us, that Disney Infinity poster. It was hanging on the wall in Toys R Us when they shut down, I got it from them. And I think we're about done. Oh, speaking of the land center I had, this is a newspaper clipping from the day it opened. June, Monday, June 26th, 2006. So there's me and my wife hanging out in the land center, ready for business. I obviously had to frame that because it's history, personal history, but still cool. Um, Poster from The King of Kong, A Fistful of Quarters, the best gaming documentary ever made. And my Angry Video Game Nerd poster, signed by James Ralph. I actually have two of these. I have a big one, a uh, standard size poster that he signed for when I went to the premiere of his movie uh, at the Symphony Theater in New York City. But that one was a little bit too big to frame and hang. So I have a smaller one that's also signed that I got from him at a convention. Little section here, um, I kind of owed to uh, Legend of Zelda. I have the OG Link, and then I have Breath of the Wild Link with a Breath of the Wild clock that was actually uh, cut out of a, an old record. Pretty neat. Darth Vader is obviously guarding the basement, as is a Stormtrooper. It's got Captain America's shield down here. I'm sure I missed a bunch of interesting tidbits and variousness down here. But if you saw anything at all in the video you want to ask me about, you have any more questions about some of the arcade machines, any questions about the, the movie theater screen, feel free to ask in the comments. That is about it. Oh, a couple little Harry Potter things up here. Of course, I have uh, Tom Riddle's diary, some uh, little monsters from Harry Potter, Niffler, Akame, Bowtruckle. Yep, that's about it. So... With that, that completes the 2020 room tour. I'm Steve, my cohort is Jesse, and we will see you in the next video.